Hello and welcome to a new season of PCC Competition. Here we are today at Las Vegas Motor Speedway for the PCC Lights Race, but first, we are going to show you what happened yesterday here at the track in the PCC Trucks Race. Starting on the pole in the number 26 truck is Ryan Jeffries, former PCC Cup Series competitor. A lot of former PCC Cup Series competitors in this race. Daniel Lecklater, starting on the outside pole, is one of them as well. Look on the inside there, Zach Meyer, another competitor uh, from the PCC Cup Series, who now is racing down in these series, takes the lead onto the backstretch, driving for Andy Lambert Motorsports, and uh, he is going to take over the lead. Mary Sue in the 999, a lot of problems this week getting that truck up to speed and she blows up running behind John Kirkpatrick, and that's going to be the end of her day. John Kirkpatrick himself uh, would go a lap down just about eight laps into this race, and you can see there he's holding up a lot of trucks on the outside. Oh, we've got some contact between the 59 of Zachary Fitzwater and 906 of Chris Washer. Uh, nine minutes into the race, looks like, oh, Zachary Meyer and Daniel Leckler get to go, and they go hard into the inside wall. That's going to be a big wreck. Look there, you see... Oh, he got hit again. Zach Meyer got hit again, going on board with J.C. Carpenter. You can see there Chris DeSanta got involved. Looks like uh, Steve Hansen. And I believe that's also, uh, there's another truck involved. Vinny LaBeouf would fall out under this caution due to a suspension failure. We'd get going green. Uh, the lead would swap a bunch of times. And ultimately, Mason Yokoyama uh, has the lead coming here. And he turns J.C. Carpenter, which would bring out another caution. Ultimately, under this caution, the time... Uh, would run out, but according to series rules, we have to have a one-lap shootout to determine the winner. So Mason Yokoyama takes the field back to the green flag, and nobody would be able to pass him, and Mason Yokoyama would take his first career win in the PCC Truck Series here at Las Vegas. And here is the rest of the top 20 from this race. Only 24 trucks started, so these are basically the full results from this uh, truck race. Only 18 trucks ended up finishing, so John Kirkpatrick was the last one running in his number three truck. Now let's take a look at the grid. Starting on the pole is Justin King in the number 22 car, followed by Dustin Oliver on the outside, driving for uh, Sam Brown Racing. Jeff Fisher on the inside, Sam Burkhart on the outside of row number two. As we go back through the field, you'll notice a few names that were formerly PCC Cup Series regulars who couldn't find a ride in the PCC Cup Series this season. Patrick O'Hannigan qualified pretty well. He will start P10. Going back even further, there's Denny Adams, whose team DJ Motorsports moved entirely down to the light series. There's Gabriel Messina, starting on the inside of row number eight. Uh, Roman Carpon and uh, Lucien Ekdal Jr. there, starting to get into a lot of rookies. There are 16 rookies in the PCC light series this season, uh, partially due to the number of cars that had to get bumped down from Cup. Uh, going back through the field, there's Casey Lester on the inside of row number 13, being flanked by Alex Constantine. Uh, Carter Fitzgerald is uh, driving for, and Tiffany Matthews are driving for Ryan Matthews, PCC Cup Series driver. As we get back towards the end of the field here, you can see the Tauger Racing Unit there on the inside of row 17. And the outside of row 18, they struggled mightily in qualifying and are going to look for pace here today. As mentioned before, Justin King in the number 22 car starts on the pole. Justin King, the king of Cleveland after winning at uh, the Cleveland Grand Prix in 2007 and 2008 in the Cup Series, leads the field down into turn number one at a blistering pace of 110 miles per hour. As these cars are Yugos, and this is a spec Yugo series, all cars top out at approximately 110 miles per hour. Uh, which means that every single track that they go to that's longer than about a half a mile is a super speedway. As you can see here, we've got pack racing already as Justin King continues to hold the lead over Jeff Fisher and Zach Meyer. Uh, looking back further in the field, Isaac Parsons is um, taking an interesting line. Uh, some drivers during practice were testing the apron line, as you can see here, and uh, it's actually not the slowest line on the track as uh, he might be losing time on some of the straightaways, but in the turns, on the flat banks, uh, it's, it's not the slowest line. So Isaac Parsons uh, getting a little creative here on lap number two on the inside. Uh, as you see there, they're three and four wide. Here's Roman Carpom leading in the number 919 car driving for Tony Long Autosport. And uh, he's actually doing quite a good job. Oh, Parsons is pinching up the track there a little bit. Uh, here's Lenora Scurry. Oh, she just got turned, and that's going to be caution number one on lap four as uh, Lenora Scurry gets away fine. 
uh, with a little bit of rear end damage, but further up the track, oh, we've got a collision between Gabriel Messina and it looks like the 964 car, 72 car. Uh, they go up the track, that's the 22 car involved, and we've got a big mess there. That's the 972 car, who's got a ton of damage, and that's going to take him out of the race. Uh, 964 car has a lot of damage going on board with the 972 here. Goes to the inside, and unfortunately he runs into his teammate, and that's going to be the end of his day uh, quite early on. So, uh, really tough break for that team. It's a new team, Genesis Engineering. At, oh, coming to the caution, we had another collision between the 43 car of Zach Meyer and uh, looks like Parsons, and he just got turned down the, the inside. Uh, life probably flashing before his eyes, considering he hit that wall yesterday. Looks like Patrick O'Hannigan's coming into the pits here, coming to the restart, and Roman Carpon leads again. Uh, Trek Tauger went a lap down under caution, and the 964 there is on the inside. Looks like we've got... Greg Maddox in second, and Lucien Ekdal Jr. in the 39 car. He is having an absolutely fantastic run there in the 39, but Roman Carpon continues to hold the lead. Uh, somewhat surprising. I didn't really expect to see him do this. Looks like we've got a bunch of cars stuck behind the lapped car of Trek Tauger. I have no idea why he's that slow. I think that car is having some problems. Uh, but Alex Constantine and Matt Beck are both stuck behind him. Jeff Fisher diving for the pits here on lap number 10. This is an unscheduled pit stop. I'm not sure what's wrong with that car. I think it's a cut tire. Uh, Greg Maddox here leading on lap number 11, and he's having a fantastic run. Casey Lester on the inside there. Greg Maddox has been in the Cup Series for the past five or six years now. He has yet to score a win, and he's going to try and claw his way back up with Winslot Motorsports, which is the team he's been driving for for the past few years. Casey Lester there on the inside, also having a fantastic run in the 29 car, driving for A.J. Murphy. Here's Tiffany Matthews. Oh, we've got a puff of smoke there. Uh, Matthews is leading the second pack here, which is 15th on back. Oh, taking a look here. Greg Maddox goes around and uh, gets knocked straight, and... Despite that, the caution is going to fly once more here. Uh, Justin King, oh no, Justin King blew up. The pole sitter is blown up on the apron, and he's going to park the car, and that's going to be the end of his day here, uh, just on lap number 12. So uh, that engine did not go its prescribed distance. Damon Jones leads on the restart 12 minutes in of the prescribed 45 minutes. Uh, Damon Jones driving for DJ Motorsports, his own team, which has run in the PCC Cup Series for the past uh, four years or so. Moves down to lights to try to contend for the championship, and uh, he has two quality drivers. Zach Meyer, uh, who was involved in that accident in the Truck Series race, takes the lead there on the inside of Patrick O'Hannigan, uh, although Hannigan was on the tail end of the lead lap at that time. Looks like Dima Van Hall is going to look on the inside. Uh, the Danishman, driving for Tony Long Autosport, teammate to Roman Carpon, and he's getting a push from Casey Lester and Fergal Sheedy, who is a uh, teammate to Patrick O'Hannigan there in the 11 car on the outside. Got three wide back there, looks like uh, Damon Jones, and Dima Van Hall takes over the lead. Roman Carpon on the outside, falling back. That car is having some problems. Uh, he's about... Uh, a second or two off the pace, I think there's an engine problem in that uh, you go, these engines are not the most reliable, uh, so it, it's an interesting deal uh, that this is the second tiered series, despite the fact that it's slower than the trucks. Oh, looks like he got hooked there a bit by one of the circle track cars, I think that was JC Carpenter in the 89. Uh, that car is definitely struggling. Uh, so is Tiffany Matthews, who, um, is also about two seconds off the pace. Uh, she had problems on the restart and has not recovered since. Tiffany Matthews uh, running in her second season for Ryan Matthews Racing. She won a pole last season at Road America, but that's about all that she did that was really notable. Uh, Sam Burkhart has now taken the lead at halfway. We're 22 and a half minutes in, and he leads over the lapped car of Patrick O'Hannigan, and we've got a few more cars back there. Looks like Fergal Sheedy is trying to give O'Hannigan a push, and Dima Van Hall as well, and we've got a few more cars. Uh, looks like 964 car is going to get lapped here, and they make evasive maneuvers to the inside. Um, you know, it doesn't look like they're going that fast, but uh, the leaders are going about 110 miles per hour, and uh, these lapped cars are going about 90 miles per hour. Uh, so, 
Uh, I reckon some people leaving the track will be going faster than them as they're leaving, as Alex Posington gets lapped there and holds up the entire inside line. Uh, lapped car supreme, uh, Alex Posington, and so is Trek Tauger. Trek Tauger goes to the inside for whatever reason, not giving the leaders the uh, preferred line. Um, man, Tauger Racing Unit really is not doing well. Uh, Sam Burkhart continues to lead as uh, he won the championship last season but did not get a ride with Johnson Racing. He is a Johnson Racing development driver. Uh, Sam Brown Racing is only the name of this team. It's actually uh, based out of Johnson Racing's shop. Uh, so just uh, named Sam Brown Racing to avoid any kind of... Uh, any kind of association with Johnson Racing as they're not allowed to have the same team owners between two different series. Trek Tauger continuing to be slow on the inside, holding up the inside line. Roman Carpon continuing to have problems. He is down to 21st place by lap 31. Uh, definitely struggling here today uh, with his unreliable Yugo engine. Dima Van Hall, on the other hand, is still in lead pack. Oh, he is slowing now too. Uh, Tony Long, uh, Autosport, I think you got a bad batch of engines, uh, as that car is dropping off the pace. He's down to about 100 miles per hour now, and uh, he's not going to be able to hold on with lead pack. You can see them pulling away there. Uh, so, really rough break for Tony Long Autosport. They were having fantastic runs, and ultimately their engines just did not really hold up at all. And here is 11th on back. Uh, Damon Jones, Ron Yave, out of nowhere, is running 12th place in that 8 car. Uh, that team was never really above 30th in any of the practice sessions, but apparently that car is handling well in the draft. Austin Sanders in the 7 car looking on the inside, uh, driving for Turbo Sports. And there's a 964 car being very slow. Here's Bluto Belushi, who had a terrible qualifying run, but is apparently hanging on very well in the draft, as he is leading right now with about uh, 15 minutes to go. So Bluto Belushi, we could have an upset here, driving for Fat Drunk Stupid Racing. And uh, Casey Lester, Greg Maddox, and I believe that's James Beverly in the 34, are having a fantastic run here in fifth, or battling for fifth place. Uh, Lester on the inside trying to go around the 08 car. I'm granted, it's about as fantastic as you can get at 110 miles per hour, but still fantastic nonetheless. As the 31 car makes an unscheduled pit stop, Dustin Oliver driving the 31 car. Uh, this is a team car to Sam Burkhart, uh, Johnson Racing Jr., as uh, that team probably should be called. Here's Alex Constantine and Fergal Sheedy, who got held up by a lap car earlier, and they're running in 8th and 9th place, so good runs for both of those cars. Uh, here is Zach Meyer, who, despite hitting the inside wall, was medically cleared to race here today and is doing a fantastic job. He's leading right now with just 10 minutes to go over the lapped car of Patrick O'Hannigan, who's been hanging on extremely well. A uh, few more cars back there. And uh, what do we have here? Looks like uh, Fergal Sheedy is moving up to about fifth place. So he managed to catch that little pack there with Casey Lester, uh, Greg Maddox and them. And he's doing a fantastic job here today in a substitute role for Barry Juveno. Dustin Oliver and Patrick O'Hannigan have managed to unlap themselves. Uh, Lucien Ekdahl Jr. on the inside there, and uh, that Zach Meyer on the outside. The lead pack has diminished down to six cars, and uh, I think we're going to be seeing pit stops here soon, as what is Alex Constantine doing? Did he forget that he was going to make a pit stop? Um, that was an interesting maneuver. Roman Carpon finally decides to bring that car into the pits to see what's wrong with it. As Bluto Belushi leads here, with just about uh, five minutes to go in this race, 45 minute race, and Bluto Belushi leads uh, over Sam Burkhart and uh, Lucien Ekdahl Jr., and I believe that's Zach Meyer in the 43 car. As you can see, all these cars are diving into the pits. They cannot make it on fuel. Uh, I mean, I certainly believe the leaders are gonna try considering how effective the draft is at this track, but most of the cars are not gonna take the risk and are bringing their cars onto pit road. Here comes Casey Lester, Fergal Sheedy, and Greg Maddox. Uh, these are 5th, 6th, and 7th place, pitting with 4 minutes to go. 
And taking a look at the leaders with three minutes to go, Lucian Ekdal Jr. decides to bring the car into the pits. He's not going to risk it. He's not going to take the risk and try to stretch fuel, uh, considering how long it takes these cars to make a lap around this track. I wouldn't risk it either. Zach Meyer continues to lead, uh, starting to get some lap traffic here, and uh, looks like uh, Patrick O'Hannigan's going to pull into the pits, but nobody else pulls in with just two minutes remaining. Uh, here we are, two minutes to go, and uh, taking a look here, there's a bunch more cars coming into the pits. Pretty much the entire field is pit already, except for some of the leaders. Uh, can see a few of the lead lap cars there coming in. One of the circle track cars is in. Uh, Matt Beck, there's a few more. And coming here, looks like we're at three to go now. Sam Burkhart dives to pit road. Bluto Belushi dives to pit road, which means the only car left that is not pit is Zach Meyer. Zach Meyer is coming around. There's one minute to go in this race. Can he stretch it to the white flag? He needs the last two more laps. Oh, we've got contact on pit road between Lenore Scurry and Tiffany Matthews, and Tiffany Matthews has flipped it on pit road. Uh, how on earth did that happen? Um, that is quite bizarre. Coming here to the white flag. Time is expiring now. So this is coming to the white flag. Zach Meyer pulling onto pit road. What a call if this can work out, if he manages to stretch his fuel all the way and can pull off this win. Going on board the Sam Burkhart here, he is in second place. He is coming to take the white flag in this number 51 car. There is the white flag now. And look on the inside, there's, oh, that's Trek Tauger, but there, there's Zach Meyer. He is going to beat Zach Meyer. Zach Meyer is going to come out of the pits behind both Sam Burkhart and Bluto Belushi. What a development here we, as we see Sam Burkhart come onto the backstretch. He is going to take the win unless Bluto Belushi can mount a challenge here. He has one shot to do it, but I don't think his car quite has the speed. Oh no, I don't think he has it. Sam Burkhart pretty much has this locked up. Coming around turn three and turn four at a creeping pace of 110 miles per hour, Sam Burkhart is going to win the first race of the season here at Las Vegas as he crosses the line now. Looking through the rest of the top 20, Bluto Belushi has a fantastic run in second place. Zach Meyer's ambitious pit strategy ultimately did not work for him. Lucien Ekdal Jr. finishes a fantastic fourth place. He ran in the top five all race. Fergal Sheedy finishes fifth place, triumphing over Greg Maddox, James Beverly, Casey Lester, and JC Carpenter. Matt Beck gets a good finish in the top 10. Damon Jones and Denny Adams, uh, one year out of the PCC Cup Series. 11th and 12th place, good for them. Uh, Gabriel Messina finishes 13th in the second Ekdal car. Austin Sanders gets a good run in 14th. Isaac Parsons finishes 15th after trying out that apron line. Ron Yave and Josiah Hoffaker finish 16th and 19th in arguably the worst cars on the grid. Kind of out of nowhere. Uh, Casey Lester's teammate and team owner AJ Murphy finishes 17th. Jeff Fisher. 18th, and Kelly Thomas, driving for Syzygy Engineering, round out the top 20. Next up is BCC Cup Series action at Surfers Paradise in the Gold Coast of Australia. Tune in next time.